What is up guys? Welcome to day number 32 of Autodesk Fusion. Uh, today I'm working specifically on how to make a snail cam and how to make it the co more correct way than just doing uh, two circles kind of offset from each other. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is start a new design, create a new sketch, um, and insert my canvas, which is going to be my snail cam. So I'm going to put this actually right here to the side, blow it up a little bit, just so I can see it, and flip it around. All right, uh, one thing I forgot to do was turn on that opaqueness to 100%, so I could see it just a little bit easier. Under document settings, we're going to change our units to inches because on the drawing here, we are in inches. So we'll start a new sketch and there we go. I am going to click down here in my timeline, edit this feature so I can just move that snail cam over just a little bit more. There we go. Alrighty, first thing I'm going to do is let's create that inside diameter, which has a dimension of a static dimension of 3 16ths inch, and that's because that axle running through it is 3 16ths of an inch. Then we need to create a parametric constraint, meaning uh, I want to have a diameter that allows me to change the nominal diameter of that cam. So what I'm going to do is under modify, click change parameters, user parameters. We're going to enter the name of DIA for diameter. You can kind of enter on almost anything you want. We'll start with two inches and then hit OK. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, create my lines of where my snail cam is going to begin right here and right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from, go towards my center and then we're going to go up to one half, uh, sorry, one quarter diameter for this first line right here. So this diameter here is going to be one quarter, so 0 0.25 times diameter. Alrighty, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another line, and this is going to be uh, for uh, 0 0.5 times diameter. We know that we want our snail cam to wrap around and to start here and end here. Um, and this little inside piece, oh, this little starting piece right here um, is, is where we're going to start from. And then we're going to wrap around, increase our diameter as things go on, and then end right here. I'm going to bring this in just a hair. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some construction lines. You can also do this with points, but I'm going to create three lines and these lines are going to be my reference points for my arcs. So I'm going to hit dimension and then I'm going to drag down here. Now if I want this to increase gradually over time what I'm going to do is um, find the differences between one fourth and one half and then we have three steps. So if this is one fourth and this is one half that means I have one, two, three steps before I get to one half. So this just becomes a fraction problem. Is uh, if we convert this into sixteenth, uh, this is probably a little bit easier to do right now. So this point right here would be four sixteenths, five sixteenths, six sixteenths, seven sixteenths, and then eight sixteenths. And then those fractions would simplify to um, one half overall. So um, let's go ahead and just so the fact of, I can show you that this doesn't change anything and fractions aren't your thing. 0 0.25, I'm gonna do as 4 sixteenths. And you notice that it did not change overall. So this one would be uh, 4 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths times diameter. And uh, when I'm going to do that, I'm also going to go ahead and make that a construction line while I'm at it because I'm not going to uh, actually end up using this line. Uh, it's just going to be a construction line. All right. Next thing is let's dimension this one. And so this one is going to be uh, we got 4 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths. So this is 6 sixteenths, 
or 3 eighths times diameter. Alrighty, and uh, now we got this last one to do, and this is going to be 3 eighths, 6 sixteenths, so this is 7 sixteenths times diameter, and then we end up over here. So just to clean this up a little bit, here's where we started. 1 fourth, uh, 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, 7 sixteenths, and then 1 half. So we increase by an eighth each way um, until we got to 1 half. Now here's the really cool part. Once you get all this in, uh, we've made this a parametric constraint. What I'm going to do is click on arc. And I'm going to click on three point arc because I know I want my snail cam to start here, go to here, but then also go through this line. Done. We've got half of it already there. Start at the top, go to the bottom, go through this line, and done. Go ahead and hit finish sketch. I know there's some other geometry in there, uh, but I'm just going to click on it all and we're going to extrude it all just because I forgot to make those um, construction lines. So what do we got here? We have a 3 16 thickness, we have a 3 16 diameter on the inside hole, and then we have parametric constraints increasing that snail cam all the way around. So if I were to go in here and make my snail cam large, let's make it a 5 inch snail cam, let's make it a big, big snail cam. What have I done? My inside diameter right here uh, of my axle doesn't change. My thickness doesn't change. What does change is the rate at which these uh, individual radiuses grow. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the most accurate snail cam I can find without using a the golden rule or exponential increases. Um, so this is probably the, the most straightforward way with the max scales we have so far. Alrighty guys, that'll be it for this video. I'll check you out in the next one.